So this is a cautionary tale, folks, and I'm also putting that out, putting this out to see whether or not anybody else has been running into the same thing. Um, I recently tried purchasing some THB 6064 chips from a new supplier, uh, which unfortunately I'm not allowed to say the name of. Um, part of the terms of the of the case where I get uh, a reimbursement for the for the chips, which are no good. Um, but basically, these uh, these chips don't work, uh, or at least they don't work in the way that they're supposed to work. So I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, pull out a couple of these chips and show you the sort of operation that I was getting, what was what's happening with them, because I'm kind of curious to see whether or not anybody else out there who has purchased one of those cheap THB 6064 drivers um, from China has run into the same problem. So here's just an example. I don't know if you can see that, hopefully clearly. Um, the markings and everything on it are absolutely perfect. They look exactly the way that they're supposed to. Uh, there's no like difference. This is one from my regular supplier, uh, which was a return. Uh, customer burned out the chip. Um, and so we just replaced it for it. But if you'll notice, like the, the markings and everything on it, exactly the same. Slightly different date code down at the bottom, but that's what you would expect. It looks exactly perfect in every other way. So in order to facilitate the testing, I came up with a, a little jig here that allows me to connect and disconnect these quickly without actually soldering them on. Um, basically, it just took some print circuit board stock and a uh, piece of hard rubber and that lines up um, on the pins of the chip and holds it in place. Just going to make certain that everything is lined up perfectly here. <clears throat> and um, before anybody says, oh well, you know, clamping it on like that isn't reliable and that's probably why you're having problems, the, the trick to that is that when I clamp on one of the ones from my previous supplier, they work perfectly. So, and that's also how I know that my board is good. So we're just going to put this clamp on there. Make sure it's on good and hard. Make sure everything looks like it's lined up. And we take these handles off so that we have room for the big clamp, which goes on over the top of the whole thing. And holds on the front part. And again, we'll make sure it's on there good and hard. Everything is right. Um, the constant pressure, that actually makes a really good contact. I haven't had any problems with them at all. Um, so this is the, the <clears throat> a slightly unusual build of, of the standard driver that I sell as part of the kit. Um, this has the LM317 um, voltage regulator built onto the board. So it's taking the motor power, which is coming in from here from my standard desktop power supply, and uh, using it to provide the 5-volt logic power. I have uh, uh, also an unusual option here plugged in. This is just the standard uh, screw terminals for the step, ground, and direction pins. Normally we have this nice little... Um, I don't have one handy, but normally we have this nice little uh, header uh, which you just plug in a, a cable to, um, especially for the adapters and, and for the bob. This is my standard little pulse generation generator setup uh, using my bob. Um, so what I'm going to do is just go ahead and power this up, and you'll see that the motor over here locks on. And what's what's interesting about it is that it it is kind of locked on, but it has very little power, and it's very easy to turn. Um, at the same time, this chip starts getting warm and let's see if we can get it to spin okay so there we go okay so we're spinning so you might have have purchased this and thought to yourself oh well you know this is good um, but what's interesting about this is it really doesn't have much strength I mean I can turn it very easily and also what's interesting is that the setting here does not seem to have much effect. Oops. See, I can still... Well, 
I popped my little marker off. Let me get that back on there. Oh, great. Turned it over, too. Put my little marker back on there and be a little bit more careful this time. But see, I can still completely override it. Uh, it has very little strength. And let's see if it'll do the same thing that it was doing yesterday. Some of these chips will work in different modes, and some won't. Now, this one seems to be working okay in the different modes. So these jumpers that I'm shorting up here at the top, they control the um, decay value. Okay, so that's half-step mode. Generally seems to be working, you know, okay, but isn't strong. It's getting actually quite warm now. And there we go. Now what I want you to notice here is that I've just switched into a micro-stepping mode. What that means is that it should be moving very smoothly all the way around. Um, remember this because when you see the, the, the other chip clamped on here, you'll see a difference, okay? So what I want you to notice here is that it's, it's jumping, right? Um, you might even be able to hear it. Also, it's still very weak. I can turn it without any problems. And if I go into the other micro-stepping modes, you'll see the same sort of problem. Let's see if the decay makes any difference here. I'm just using tweezers, by the way, to uh, to jumper these settings. That's a little bit better. It's a little bit quieter, but it's still it's still jumping from one setting to the next. This should be in this mode. It should be a nice smooth motion. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back on here. We're back in half step mode again. You can see it spinning around. That's about right for half step mode. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and shut this down quickly switch over to one of the regular chips from my regular supplier so that you can see how it should be so if if you bought a THB 6064 driver off eBay from China and that's the kind of motion that you're getting out of it um, if that's the kind of strength that a NEMA 23 motor has then just know that that's not the way it should be or could be. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and grab a new chip. This is one of the chips from my regular supplier that I've been doing business with for years. And just to explain, uh, the, the guy that's the regular supplier of these chips that I've been working with since the beginning, um, you know, no problems with him, does a great job, all that. Uh, but he does charge you know, pretty solid price for his chips. And I, every time I order, I always try to get a better price. Always trying to talk him down. Uh, you know, that's business, right? And, uh, and also I'm cheap. Let's face it. But part of that is, is uh, I'm cheap because if I could get the chips for less, then that would allow me to pass it on to, to the customer for less. You know, I could drop my prices and, and get some more people to to be interested in these drivers. And again, just to show you, I mean, it's exactly the same kind of a thing. Different date code, but the logo and everything looks exactly the same. So here's the chip that I was just using. I believe it's this one. Yeah. Or, wait, no, it's not that one. It's this one. Right? No, it was that one. So that's the chip I was using there, and you can see that everything looks exactly the same. Maybe a slight difference in the positioning of the of the logo. This is the real one. This is the knockoff. Okay. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this on here. So as I was saying, uh, I was hoping that I could get the chips for less and pass on the savings, and you know, still have the same quality. Uh, it was worth a shot. So, obviously it did not work. And, um, luckily I was able to, to, uh, work with PayPal, who have taken very, very good care of me over the years, and get them to, um, to get me a refund. Okay, we lined up right. Good. Okay. Let's 
squeeze it real good. But now, hopefully, assuming I haven't done anything wrong here. Yeah, of course. Moving a little too fast. I forgot I had to put that piece in place first. Let's try that again. So this is what you should be getting in terms of motion if you purchase something from a reputable supplier. Well, I hope I have that on there right. Ugh. Nope. Slid down. Sorry. I'll probably just cut this part of the video out. So if there's a gap before this, it's because... I was fumbling around with it and it just took me forever to get this thing positioned correctly. Yeah, that's better. And again, the reason for this clamping is so that I could quickly change um, from one chip to the next without having to so solder and desolder each time, which is a real pain in the rear. Okay. Okay, so there we're clamped on. Now, at the lower power setting, I can turn this pretty easily, but the difference here is that if I crank this up to a higher power setting, okay, that cannot be turned, okay? That's real power. I hope you can see how white my fingers are. I, I, okay, finally. Got it to turn a little bit, but that is extremely strong, and that's not all the way up, okay? I'm going to turn that back down a little again, um, and I'm not turning it all the way up because I don't want to overheat it because this little heat sink that I have really isn't sufficient uh, for that. Point being, much stronger. Now let's look at some motion. Go ahead and turn on the little motion generator, okay? And you'll notice I have a nice smooth motion, okay? Just want to I want you to hear what it sounds like when I turn this up, okay? I'm going to turn up the little screw, okay? I'm not going to leave it up for very long because I'd overheat it, but there's, you know, I can override it. I turn it up and I can't override it, okay? So there's a lot of power there. Secondly, it works in all the decay modes without any problem. Now, that other chip that I tested happened to be one of the ones that did work in all the decay modes. I should have kept track and tested a different one. Uh, but several of the chips that I got from this new supplier that were junk, if you, if you shorted these two pins right here and put it into the, I think it's DCY1 uh, mode, which is, look at this other board here so that I can tell what that is. So that would be 20% decay. And it was interesting because it would fail in 20% decay and it would fail in 60% decay, but it would work in 40 and 80, which meant that when the DCY select line 1 was shorted, either 20 or 60, it would fail. If DCY 1 was open, no matter what I did with DCY 2, it would, it would still turn. Um, so, I mean, that was just weird. Um, but that was something I was seeing on about, I don't know, three quarters of the chips that I tested from the new supplier. But here, here's the real big thing. Let me show you what happens when we pop into micro-stepping mode. Okay, now, see the difference? It's just nice, smooth, gentle turning. See that? It's not this pop, 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 pop thing. It's nice and smooth, okay? And that, and that goes for all of the micro-stepping modes. Irrespective of what mode you put it in, nice, smooth, beautiful motion, okay? And you can hear with it tuned correctly, it's silent, okay? I don't know if you can hear that. I mean, you, you might hear just the slightest, dullest buzzing. If I turn it up, 
oops, if I turn up the current, there we go, now you'll start to get a little bit of loping and you'll get a little bit of sound. Okay, but again, at this mode, very hard to stop it. Okay, doing a very nice job there. Nice smooth motion. And when it's t when it's tuned to a power that it needs to be for the load that it's carrying, nothing. Very good. So this is a good chip. This is what you get out of one of my drivers when you buy the chip from me because I resell only the chips that are absolutely proven to work from a reliable seller. Tried a lower cost seller, got burned. Looks like I'm going to get most of my money back. I'm eating the shipping, of course. But if you guys are buying... THB 6064 AH drivers on eBay, and you're getting the kind of motion that you saw on that first one with the jerking and the microstep modes, with it, you know, not having any strength at the higher power settings. Um, well, that's why. It's a knockoff. It's not the real thing. So you get what you pay for, and if you buy it from MassMind, you're going to get quality. Thanks for listening.